everyone, I'm Martin and welcome to Astronomy for Beginners. Today I'm going to show you how to use a DSLR camera and use it to image planets. Now, have you seen through a lot of video guides and a lot of people recommend to use a dedicated webcam or a planetary camera for imaging planets? In this video, I'm going to show you how would you use a DSLR camera, a normal camera, to take great pictures and film footage of the planets and the moon. There's a few little settings you need to set on your camera. Now that just, I'm just going to cover basically on the Canon type cameras, uh, particularly the 600D. Okay, I don't know about the other brands and the other settings, but I'm certain that you could do this on a similar effect. But I'm just going to cover on the 600D and I'm going to show you how would you record an image on your DSLR camera. Now the good thing about the DSLR camera is it has really good frame rates. Now the frame rates on this camera is around about 25 to 24 frames per second. Now the frames per second is very crucial because you want to capture as much frames as possible over a set period. Because what the reasons for taking a AVI or movie clip is that the Earth's atmosphere is very turbulent and basically you want to grab as much of detail between the planet's surface and grab all that detail through that atmosphere. So when you come to st stack the image you'll get a much more high res, much sharper image and again if we didn't have these up there, the atmosphere and the Earth Right, we'll gain a lot more detail. So the idea is you take that movie uh, video and you, you collect a few frames from there. Now it doesn't have to be a long recording. Now the good thing is about the DSLR camera, there, was, uh, there is a few tricks to set this up correctly. The main thing is, once you get the target and it's centered, Make sure that you find the scopes aligned so you can find the target onto your camera and make sure you achieve focus. Once you've got that, those two key areas sorted out, you can then begin to set the camera to take a live video show. Now, the good thing about this is the camera, I've now figured out a way that you don't really need a ball. Now this, ca this camera can be used on different types of telescopes, a Maxitov, a refractor or a reflector. With this settings here, I figured out that you don't need a Volo lens and you can actually take a closer shot through video, much closer and you can do it between 3 times all the way up to 10 times on the camera itself. So the reason why we do a live video shot is that we capture as much frames so when we stack it in Registack 6 or any planetary stacking uh, software you'll get a much more razor sharp image of the planet or the moon. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a closer look, show you the settings on this camera. I know it's during the day, we're going to focus this telescope onto a building which is round about 30 kilometers away from me okay. and I'm going to show you the settings so that you can take using the DSLR camera and take excellent planetary or moon images so we'll take a closer look on the camera settings and uh, we'll show you there so we've got a live image of the building which is around about 30 kilometers away what we're going to do is it's slightly out of focus so we're going to use electronic focuser and focus the image okay we've achieved focus and as you can see there nice and razor sharp now to set the camera to take planetary shots if you're going to take a live image, a live video of the planet or the moon, 
first off you're going to need is what we're going to do is set the camera now as you can see here you can set it through manual and we go all the way down to the camera setting okay so basically you want video you get the screen saying ensure lens is attached so you press the red button to select the live view that gives you the live image as you can see there now this is a no modification this is a normal modification what we're going to do is we're going to press menu and from there from there you'll get a series of menus and what we're going to do is we're going to use the scroll, scroll button here and we're going to set the movie record size you press set it gives you the option to either take 25 frames per second or 24 whatever different uh, different movie shots will give you a decent frame rate and all that uh, the 6x4 8x25 does not give you the option to even though it gives you the higher frames per rate of 50 frames per second the only disadvantage is you can't use the modification if you're going to use the the, the 640 by 50 frames per second or, or the 128 by 50 frames per second then you're going to need to use a Barlow lens so that's not to worry anyway so we're going to set the camera to if we use the quick scroll at the top here like so there's a little scroll part here okay you can select the okay so we're going to select it to 1920 by 24 of a, uh, seconds okay you notice at this point here you've got the, the modification and again to set that is you press this button there these two buttons here you're going to set between these two buttons here and we're going to select the 3 by 10 times option so you got the 9 1920 by 24 frames per second and then you've got the modification of 3 times to 10 times modification now usually because this is, this camera's been converted to magic lantern usually i can zoom in even closer to 10 times so and how to do that is you press to hold down the display button at the top okay it gives you the option and then i just press the the minus and plus button the trouble is though the only disadvantage is because of the magic land setting i can't show you so you hold it in and you zoom in so what we're going to do is we're going to try and i'm going to change the camera around and show you what the standard camera will look like so again this usually just works holding the display button zoom in and zoom out once you've got your zoom you can just press record like so you get the indication there it's recording and you can take your image of the the planet or the moon you're going to image with and it takes in uh, a movie file so we're on the modified camera and as you can see the ir lens it gives you that weird appearance okay so this is an astral camera and you've got this bit of false coloring so don't worry about that we're going to show you on the standard camera again same settings make sure it's on video mode make sure you switch on uh, to the Velar view okay so and then it gives you your image so I'm gonna boost the application up so there you go so that is your live image we're going to increase the uh, exposure so you can see the screen okay so we've got that focused we're gonna set the camera like before pressing the menu button press the menu button scroll to the setting press set highlight the times three times modification and then at the top select 24 by frames say frames press select button put into click off menu and as you can see now that is the three times zoom then what we do is we go at the top you hold down the display button here 
using the control buttons here and you're going to zoom in and as you can see I'm at 10 times modification hold the display button like so zoom out and there you go that is one way to boost your image scale up on the planets when they're really tiny okay this is very good at getting uh, some really good close-ups there now the disadvantage of this uh, device is the more times modification you you go in there the more vibrations you're going to get and also you're going to get a lot of noise in the image so as you can see there there's a build up of noise so when you increase the modification set a boundary and I found that that three times and five times modification is more than ample okay so that's a three times modification and that's particularly useful when you're trying to image close-ups of the planets so as you can see you can then once you're happy with your your zoom okay and you just press the record button and then what it does is then it begins to record your image like so so there you go that is how you take a a live video of the planets using the time zoom and basically what that does makes the camera act like a bottle lens and you get some really good sharp detail in there so we've got the image of the moon and then you were using the the, the three times modification now the good thing is uh, with this you don't need to use a bottle lens and as you can see I'm well focused okay I'm just using I'm just using the uh, an Elta Synscan mount, mount and you can see I've got some really good detail there with just uh, with just three times modification okay so you can see the terminator there all right and this is just three times so there's a lot of there's a lot of power here okay so it makes a difference again the good thing about uh, uh, this setup is if you if you hold down display okay you can actually uh, zoom in you can actually zoom in quite uh, close as well okay as we just move the telescope we just uh, need to get some of the images there okay so even as we hold down display okay you can actually just zoom in and right down to uh, even just stupid amounts of modification there like I mean this is uh, literally 10 times modification but again if you as soon as you zoom in a bit more you start to get a bit of a noisy image so you just gotta be careful keep a balance okay when you're using high modification again here we've got some good detail there so what I'm going to do I mean this is one of my favorite parts here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a recording here of about a minute so what I'll do is then I'll just cancel that and we'll just take a recording of that Once you've got your movie clip of Venus, now this is my movie clip, and I just want to show you that before you can stack it, you need to convert it into an AVI file. 
plus uh, with Venus being drifting across the screen there on the DSLR sensor you need to sort of centralize that image uh, before you stack it or is it just won't register on register at 6 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out of that uh, recording and I'm going to show you that you need to download uh, the pip So download PIP and you should open up the, the PIP software. And you come to uh, the PIP program itself. Then what you're going to do is you're going to add your image file. Once you've got your image file, select desktop. There's that image file, open. So basically we've got our image file there, we'll just move that down. We're going to click on optimize options for planetary. We've collected 1691 frames. We're then going to change a few settings. Uh, we want to convert into color, we need to keep the color, so it's a color option. Uh, all this is all sort of set for planetary use, so I won't even bother with them. But the main thing we are interested before we can stack the image using Registack 6, we need to convert the file to AVR. So there's that AVR file, okay? Uh, we can call it uh, whatever we want to name it Venus 1. Select the directory, we'll put it onto a desktop, click OK and then we're going to process okay, this is just a quick process we start it so now PIP has finished processing our film it is now converted to an AVR file we're going to click on it to check the video file and as you can see now PIP has processed it now it's centralized the, uh, the planet and now it's converted to an AVI file. This will enable us to stack the image using Registack 6. Now I'm not going to go through to Registack 6. Please refer to my other, other video guide on stacking process uh, of planets using Registack 6. So please refer to that video guide. I hope this video guide gives you some uh, decent tips, okay? Please undertake this, this little uh, technique and see what images you get with your DSLR camera. And again, don't expect the frame rates to be staggering compared to a dedicated uh, planetary webcam, okay? The, those are very different cameras, but you can get really good, similar results with a normal DSLR camera. Please feel free to comment in this video. We're also available on the, the Facebook group, okay? Please join that Facebook group uh, for Astronomy for Beginners. We've got some great advice in there. And again, please click on the subscribe button. Please subscribe onto my channel. And uh, thanks again. Thanks for watching. And clear skies to you all.